This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Listen, over 12 years ago, when I first started working as a design engineer in the automotive industry, one of the very first things they gave me was a space mouse. And I used the crap out of these things. So when 3D Connection reached out to me and asked me to try these out with what I do now as a furniture designer, I was over the moon because this is exactly the product that's gonna speed up my workflow when designing on a desktop. So in this video, I wanna show you guys what these are, what they can do, and also how I use these with the different programs that most makers use for designing furniture like Shaper 3D, Fusion 360, and SketchUp. And I'm hoping that by the end of this, you'll be more informed on whether or not these devices could add some benefit to your workflow, and also which of these is better for the type of work that we do. I've also added timestamps for the different sections of this video to help save you guys some time, so feel free to skip around. And just so you guys know, 3D Connect is not sponsoring this video. They didn't ask for a video. They did however send these to me for free. But just in case you guys are in the market for one of these, you know I got you. I end up working out a deal with them where over the next three months, starting from the day that this video is uploaded, my audience, you guys will get 10% off any product from their website by using my affiliate link in the descriptions. And I'm also gonna get a little bit of commission from that sale, so at the same time, you'll be helping to support my channel and what I do. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about these. So the two models I have here with me is the Space Mouse Wireless and then this larger Space Mouse Pro. And you also hear people refer to these as 3D mouse. But just so you know, I'm gonna use both terms interchangeably. So if you hear me say 3D mouse or space mouse, just know that I'm referring to the same thing. Um, but anyway, both of these devices come in wired and wireless versions. And there's also a larger model with an LCD screen that's called the Space Mouse Enterprise. Unfortunately, we don't have that here right now. So we're just gonna focus on these two. Um, really, it doesn't matter which one you end up getting, the heart of these devices are the same, which is this cap that has a sensor inside that allows the user to maneuver digital models in six degrees of freedom. So the way I currently have this set up is that pulling and pushing the cap up and down vertically will zoom in and out. Pushing it side to side pans the model from side to side. And then if we push forward and back, it moves the model up and down. And then rotating it will spin the model along the z-axis and then tilting back and forth like this rotates the model along the x-axis. So one thing to know about Shaper 3D and SketchUp is that this side-to-side -side tilt is disabled by default. So if we go over to Fusion 360, you can see that tilting this cap side-to-side -side will rotate the model about this y-axis. Now if we hop back over to Shaper 3D though, the same input is not gonna give us the same motion. And same thing over in SketchUp, it's not gonna allow us to rotate this model about the red axis. Now to fix this in SketchUp, what we wanna do is come over to the 3D connection control panel, under configure, make sure we're under SketchUp, and then go under the navigation tab and make sure to disable this lock horizon. Now if we go back here, we can rotate the model about the red axis. Now over in Shaper 3D though, this setting is actually inside the program. So when you're in here, come under view and then go down to navigation mode and deselect the keep horizon level. And once you've done that, there we go. So when you're first starting out, I highly recommend leaving that horizon lock enabled because that extra degree of freedom can really screw you up when you're just learning how to control this. Um, all right, so what makes these different from a regular mouse is that these allow us to apply all the movements simultaneously so that we end up with these very fluid and natural camera movements. Whereas a regular mouse only allows us to make one movement at a time. So in Shaper 3D, we can orbit around the model by using the right mouse button and then we can pan over by holding down the middle mouse button. And then we can zoom in or out by using the scroll wheel to the area that we need to see. And if we need to look at something else, then we gotta do it all over again. There's just lots of moving, stop, moving, stop type of thing going on. Lots of clicks, lots of repetitive wrist movements, and we're just kind of zigzagging around until we finally reach the view that we're looking for. But when I'm using a space mouse, I'm able to combine all those movements together and get to the view that I need to get in one smooth motion. And on top of that, I can actually get a lot more control with this because it feels like I'm actually holding the model in my hand and maneuvering it in the physical world, which just makes the navigation feel super intuitive. 
but besides just giving the user a more pleasant viewing experience, there's actually an added ergonomic benefit as well because this completely eliminates those small repetitive wrist movements that we need to make when using a regular mouse. But it's important to note that these devices are meant to be used in conjunction with the regular mouse. It's not meant to replace it because these are only responsible for controlling the navigation of the model in 3D space. They don't move the cursor and they don't perform any mouse clicks. So we still need the regular mouse in order to select the features on the model and to be able to use the tools. So for me, the way I have this set up is that since I'm right-handed, I still keep my regular mouse on the right side of the keyboard and then I have the space mouse set up on the left side, which is a pretty common setup for people who use these type of devices. And even for photo and video editing, I have a similar setup where I keep the trackpad and this loop deck on the left side for manipulating timelines and quick access to tools. So I'm pretty used to having to move my hand back and forth between these type of devices and the keyboard. But this is definitely something that requires a little bit of time to get used to if you never had this type of setup before. And especially if you're someone who relies on keyboard shortcuts because you're gonna find yourself moving your hand back and forth quite often. So in the beginning, you're probably gonna struggle with this a little bit along with just having to learn how to navigate using a whole new set of tools. But there are a few things we can do to help transition into this new workflow. And one of those is by using these customizable buttons on a 3D mouse. And this smaller one has two on the sides. So by default, these will open up these radio menus and each with four different tools that we can then select using our regular mouse. And also notice that these radio menus will open up wherever my cursor is, so we're never very far away from the tools we need, which is really convenient. Now, if you don't like these radio menus, we can also go into the settings and come under the buttons tab and change what these can do. So we can also change these to run any of these single application commands. We can change these to run a combination of keystrokes, and we can even run macros depending on which of these programs you're using. So we can use these buttons to take care of a lot of the things that we would need to use a keyboard for. And now on the pro version, we've got a lot more buttons. And even though most of these have labels on them already, these can all be customized. But by default, we've got this group on the left that just duplicates what we already have on the keyboard. So we've got escape, shift, control, alt, and then this menu button that just takes us to the 3D connection properties. And then there's this set on the right that lets us jump to different preset views in the model. And then there are these four buttons on the top that aren't labeled, which are obviously for customizing. And I'm gonna show you guys how I have these set up in the settings portion of the video, but if you don't wanna wait for that, feel free to skip forward. But because of all these buttons and this giant wrist rest, this is significantly larger than a small guy. So it's really important to take this into account when you're trying to decide which one is better for your setup. Because if you have a smaller desk or if you already have a lot of stuff on there, I'd say this small one is probably the way to go. And guys, just because it's small does not mean that it's light. It's got this metal base on the bottom, which I'm guessing is probably stainless steel. So it actually weighs 450 grams or about a pound, which is heavy enough to where I can lift the cap to execute the movement that we need before the device is lifted off the desk. And there's also a ring of rubber around the bottom, so we don't have to worry about it sliding around when we're pushing it from side to side. In fact, when I have this on my desk, it feels like it's sucked down on the desk. It does not want to move. Now, the Pro version, it doesn't have a metal base, or at least not one I can see, but it weighs 630 grams or close to 1.4 pounds. So it is heavy as a rock and also since my hand will be pushing down on the wrist rest while I'm using it this guy it is not going anywhere. Now, as far as ergonomics go, the cap on both of these devices are made from a rubber material and they have this curved contour for the thumb and fingers to nest into. And the texture on here helps to keep my fingers from slipping even when I don't have to grip it very hard. Also, there are ridges at the three, six, nine, and 12 o'clock positions that lets me know the correct orientation of the device. And I really like these because they also add an additional grip when I'm making rotational movements. So overall, both of these devices are really comfortable to use. There's really not much to say about the Pro version because you can see that it's got this really nice ergonomic contour. It's really comfortable to use over long periods of time. But I do want to say something about this small one because when I use this, I usually have it turned at 45 degrees so that I can easily reach these buttons on the sides. And now if you look at my hand, it's oriented more vertically and it's resting on the edge of my palm. So this angle from my hand to my forearm, it's not twisted. It's really natural and 
it's similar to if I'm using one of those vertical mice. So it's actually really comfortable to use over long periods of time. But if you're someone that uses it like this with the palm on top of the cap and now your forearm is twisted, I recommend getting a wrist rest because the angle of your wrist to the forearm is more like using a regular mouse without a wrist rest, which could lead to future problems. So yeah, I recommend using it with your hand more vertical and the device oriented at 45 degrees. It is super comfortable this way, but if not, get yourself a wrist rest. Now, as far as compatibility go, 3D Connection has like this massive list of 200 programs that the device is supported. And the good news is that SketchUp, Shaper 3D, and Fusion 360 are all on there, with one caveat being the web-based version of SketchUp is not supported because the device actually thinks we're using the browser instead of the actual CAD program. But there is a Chrome plugin that we can download to get some of the 3D mouse functionalities to work. Um, and I tried it, but it just keeps saying that it's disconnected. Um, I'm sure I overlooked something, but it looks like it can only handle some of the basic navigation stuff. I won't be able to program what the buttons can do, so I didn't really want to waste too much time on this. And so if you want to get the full functionality of the Space Mouse with SketchUp, you're going to have to use either the free 2017 SketchUp desktop version or the SketchUp Pro desktop version. Um, okay, with that said, if you're someone like me that uses multiple programs throughout your design process, then you probably saw this but we can go into the 3d connection properties to set the configuration for each separate program so right now i have a set to shaper 3d but there's also sketchup and if we scroll up there's fusion 360 and if you don't see the program you want just come down here and click on add application anyway the first thing you're going to see on this page is this global speed control this sets how responsive the cap is to your input across all six degrees of freedom so when you're first starting out i recommend turning this down so that you can have better control of the model and as you become more proficient with this then come back in here and speed it back up it's gonna help a lot with the learning curve Next, let's go to the Axis tab, and this is where we can fine tune how the cap controls each degree of motion and the speed of each of those. And I've kept most of these on default. The main things I changed is that I swapped out the zooming in and out motions with the up and down motions. So right now I have this set to where zooming is done by pushing and pulling the cap up and down vertically. And then to move the model up and down, we would push and pull the cap forward and backward, which just feels a lot more intuitive to me. And I also turned down some of the individual speeds so that I can get more control over the rotational movements. Now, if for some reason the navigation still doesn't feel right, we can actually change the way the navigation works. So for SketchUp, well, let's uh, first switch over to SketchUp. Now there's this extra navigation tab that I showed you earlier where we locked and unlocked the horizon. Um, now, if we come under motion model, right now it's set to object, which makes the most sense to me because it feels like I'm stationary and I'm holding the model in my hand while I'm maneuvering the actual object. And all these other navigation modes is more like the object is stationary and I'm maneuvering this camera around the object. Um, so let's try one of these out and let's launch uh, SketchUp. Um, it just feels really awkward to me. I. <laughs> Yeah, you can see I can't, I have no idea where I am. Um, I can't control this <laughs> at all. So I always have this set to object mode. It just, <laughs> it just makes the most sense to me. We can also change this setting in Shaper 3D, but like I showed you earlier, let's minimize this real quick. Um, for Shaper 3D, the setting is actually inside the program. So with the program open, we wanna come under view and then come down to navigation mode and we can change that to camera mode. And just like earlier, I have a really tough time controlling this. Like, it's just all over the place because I can't find the center to orbit around. Um, so yeah, I just like before, I just I like to keep it on object mode. It just makes the most sense to me. Now for Fusion 360, I can't find this setting under the 3D connection properties. And I also looked for it in the preferences, but I cannot find it anywhere. So if you guys know where it is, let me know in the comments. My favorite part about being able to customize the navigation controls is that now we can unify the movement controls across all the CAD programs that we're using. So now we've got SketchUp, Shaper 3D, and Fusion 360 to all navigate the same way. So now we can jump around the different programs without needing to stop and readjust how we navigate because 
well, you know, usually each program has their own unique way of navigating by default when we're just using the keyboard and the regular mouse. So like I mentioned earlier, if you're someone that uses multiple programs throughout your design process, having everything unified is going to smooth out your workflow. And of course, we can also speed up that workflow once we get these buttons programmed, which can actually be kind of difficult when we're deciding what tools to assign to these buttons, right? So the criteria I'm usually looking for is one, it needs to be a tool that I use very often, which is obvious. Two, if I'm using keyboard shortcuts, I want to reduce the amount of times I have to move my hand from one side of the keyboard to the other because the shortcuts aren't all clustered in one single area, right? And three, I want to reduce the amount of mouse travel and mouse clicks because not all tools have keyboard shortcuts. So with all that in mind, the way I have this little guy set up is that, well, since we've only got two buttons, each one is going to launch a radio menu and this left one's going to bring up the sketch tools that I use most often. So I've got line, circle, rectangle, and then the offset edge tool. So now I just click on the surface I want to sketch on, click my shortcut button, and start sketching. And we're just going to sketch a rectangle here. And just so you guys know, I usually use my right hand on a number pad to type in the values and press enter. And to exit the sketch, I can either reach over with my right hand to press the escape key since it's already on the keyboard, or I actually have this button on my mouse programmed for the escape key. So after typing the values, I can just press this instead. And then I'll spin out of that view and let's zoom in here. Click on the surface we just sketched and then Shaper 3D's adaptive UI will automatically bring up the extrusion tool. And that's it. So we were able to do all of that without needing to remove our left hand from the 3D mouse, which <laughs> is really convenient. Um, oh, since I mentioned about this mouse, this is the Logitech MX Master 3, which has a bunch of buttons on here that we can program. So besides this one that I set for the escape key, there's two buttons on the sides that I set to redo and undo. And then there's another button right here where the thumb rests on that I've set to enter. So this mouse alone could already take care of a bunch of things that I usually use the keyboard for. So if you have one of these productivity mice or actually 3D Connection sells some really nice mice that was built specifically for CAD. So check those out. But yeah, if you have any mice like this that have a bunch of buttons on it, don't forget that you can actually program these to speed up your workflow too. Um, but anyway, guys, let's get back to this guy. So I got this right button set up for most of the 3D stuff I use. And since Shaper 3D has the adaptive user interface that automatically brings up tools like move, extrude and offset face, and also chamfer and fillet, it's actually pretty easy to decide what tools I want to assign to this button. So if you've seen any of my past videos on furniture design, then you know that align, replace face, translate, and subtract gets a lot of use throughout all of my projects. So let's say right now our stretcher is all the way out here, and the first thing we want to do is match this end up with the leg. So let's launch our menu and select a line. We're going to pick the part that we want to move and then pick the edges that we want to match up to and click done. And now we want to match up this end. So once again, launch our menu, go to replace face, select this face and then select this face and click done. And that's it. And for anyone wondering, I was pressing this enter button that I mapped on my mouse to confirm all the actions. So yeah, even though this little guy only has two buttons on it, it can do a lot. Um, but there is one key on the keyboard that I still reach for is the shift key, which I need to hold down in order to select multiple parts. So that's why I prefer the Space Mouse Pro because it's got these four modifier keys on the left. Um, now for me, I only use the shift key because I already have the escape key undo and redo mapped on my regular mouse. So I'm probably going to change the other three buttons to something else later on. I don't know what yet. So for now, these are all just set to their default values. Um, but I did remap this menu button to open and close the items manager in Shaper 3D, which is something I use a lot. So not having to move my mouse all the way over here to open it up and then move over here to close it every time, it saves a lot of time. Now for this set of buttons on the right here, I've kept these three default, which just takes us to the top view, right view, and front view. And then I changed this button here to create new sketch planes. So now I can just press this, select our reference plane, drag that out, and there's our new plane. And I set this middle button to quickly take us back to an ISO view because 
you know, sometimes we're just zoomed in here really far and it would just be a lot quicker to zoom back out with just this one button. And then I set this fit button to open up the sidebar that lets me switch between the modeling, visualization, and the drawing workspaces. And also I'm currently running the parametric modeling beta for Shaper 3D right now. So in the future, I think it's probably gonna be better for me to remap this to open up this history sidebar instead. And that just leaves us with these four buttons on top. So one is going to launch the same radial menu for sketching that you saw earlier. And then two will launch the align tool. Three is the replace face tool. And then four is the subtract tool. So these buttons will just make it quicker for me to get to those tools. Um, so I don't really do much designing in Fusion 360. I mainly use it for cam. So let me show you guys how I have this little guy set up for that. So let's uh, go ahead and launch Fusion 360. And it's really simple. I just have this left button set so that with one click, it takes me directly to the manufacturer workspace. And then this right button will launch a radio menu for creating a new setup. And then the three tool paths I use most often. So there's 3D Adaptive, 3D Parallel, and then 2D Pocket. And that's it. It's just really simple like that. And the Space Mouse Pro is set up pretty much the same way. I only remapped the top four buttons. So one is going to take me back to the design workbench, and then two takes me to the manufacturer workbench. And then three launches that radio menu that you saw earlier with the new setup and the three tool paths. And four launches the post-processing screen for those tool paths. So since this is pretty much all I use Fusion 360 for, it just made sense for me to dedicate a single button to switching over to the manufacturer workbench. And I know I said a bunch of times that even though with just two buttons, this little guy can do a lot, right? But I do wish that they could split this one button into two because if you compare that with my regular mouse, you can see that the length of this one button is equal to the total length of these two buttons on the regular mouse, right? Um, so if we could do something like this on the space mouse, this would double the functionality of this little guy. But then again, I don't really know how these things are designed. There could be some internal limitations. Um, I don't know. Well, actually, I guess I could learn more about how these type of devices work by going on to Brilliant.org. So if you guys don't know, Brilliant is this amazing online learning platform that takes an incredibly active approach to teaching math, science, and computer science. They throw you immediately into these challenging problems right at the start of their courses that actually give you something that you can apply that information that you're learning to, which in turn helps that new information to stick in your mind better and accelerate that learning process. Process. And in my opinion, if you want to learn how these type of devices work, a great place to start is with their course on computer science fundamentals to help wrap your mind around computational thinking and then later progress to introduction to algorithms and see how devices like the Space Mouse can control over 200 different programs. And in addition to that, you can also find math courses on topics ranging from algebra to calculus and some of my favorite science courses like quantum theory and special relativity. So if you want to start learning for free today, head over to brilliant.org forward slash Bevelish Creations, which you also find linked in the descriptions. And the first 200 people to sign up with that link will also get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thanks so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and for supporting my channel. All right, so would I recommend these for makers and furniture designers? Absolutely, yes. I mean, if you're looking for ways to be more efficient when modeling on a desktop, or if you're using multiple programs and you want to smooth out that workflow, I can't think of a better way than getting one of these. And yes, when you first start using one, it's gonna be a little bit awkward. There's definitely gonna be an adjustment period, but trust me, just use it every single day for like a week. Just design something. Your body will adjust to it and you probably won't even wanna go back to using just a keyboard and a mouse. Um, and as you know, we've got a few different models to choose from and then there's wired and wireless versions of each. So I think ultimately the decision on which one to get comes down to what your workflow is, how much desk space you have, have and what you're looking to get out of these because if you're just looking for a device to give you that nice smooth navigation experience or maybe your workspace is already very cramped then 
this is the way to go. Um, also, if you design everything in Shaper 3D, which has that adaptive UI, you already saw how I had this along with my mouse programmed together to take away most of what I needed a keyboard for, right? Um, I think even if you use Fusion 360 and SketchUp just for CAD, this setup is enough for most makers out there. However, if you do use more than one workspace in Fusion 360, like the design workbench and the manufacturer workbench, then you'll definitely benefit from the extra functionality of the Space Mouse Pro. Now, for me personally though, I prefer the Pro because of the ergonomic design and all the extra buttons on it. And I also went with the wired version for this because the wireless version still requires plugging in this 2.4 gigahertz receiver into the computer. So it really didn't make a difference for me. Now, if this was Bluetooth though, I would have definitely gone with that. Um, for this small one, I did go with the wireless because this guy is so small and it comes with this case. So I can actually see myself putting this in a bag and just travel and design on the go. Um, yeah, that is all I have to say about this subject. I hope you guys liked the video and that was helpful. If you do want to get one of these, don't forget to use my affiliate link in the descriptions to get 10% off everything on their website besides the kits. But it is only good for the next three months, starting from the day that this video is uploaded. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me one of these and I will see you guys in the next video.